Hello everyone, this is Shikhar and today we are going to discuss a very interesting, important topic that is Logical Volume Manager. In this lecture, we are going to understand about the concept of LVM and we'll see what are the benefits of LVM. So let's continue. Managing Logical Volume Management, LVM is Storage. LVM is something related with the management of storage. Suppose I have a Linux box in an organization obviously that linux box should have some sort of storage it could be internal storage or it could be external storage so the management of storage that has been allocated to the server is very much important how we can do that for that we have lvm that is available with every operating system of linux so with the help of lvm we can manage the storage effectively and efficiently. So let's understand the first point. Logical volume management provides a higher level view of the disk storage on the computer system than the traditional view of disk and partitions. Traditional view of disk partition means that suppose you know I have to create a partition on the I have to create a file system on a Linux box. If I am going with the traditional way, what does it mean? I have the disk, I am simply going to create a partition on that and that partition I have given to the user. But they do have some limitation with the tradition view. That gives the system administrator much more flexibility in allocating storage to applications and users. So let's understand this line with a diagram here. So let's understand here. LVM. Suppose you know I have a Linux box here. So this is the Linux box I have and uh, that Linux box is having a storage. Suppose this is my storage here and uh, external storage and that would be of 100 GB size. So first we understand when we do not have the LVM. I am not uh, discussing LVM as of now, I am just discussing the traditional view of creating the file systems. Then we will understand what are the limitations we have and how this LVM has come into the picture. So now this is my server. This is the server I have. It could be Linux server, whatever. Now this 100 GB is allocated to the server. To make it usable, this storage, I have to create the file system on that so that the users can utilize this 100 GB. Suppose I have a requirement from the Oracle team that I need a 50 GB of file system. So there are two requirements. One requirement is 50 GB of file system slash Aura DB. Another is my 20 GB requirement of another file system that is Oracle. So two requirement I have. So what I can do here, this is my disk which is allocated to this server, Linux box. So this disk, I have simply used the traditional way of creating the file system. I have created two partition on this disk. The first partition I have created, that is size of 50 GB. Another one is my 20 GB. So this is the 50 and this is the 20 GB. And after creating the file system, I can use ext4, xfs, whatever the file system I can use and then I can mount this file system, this partition to this Aura DB and Oracle. I have to create two mount point using mkdir command and I can, you know, mount this file systems. If you'll fire the, this command df-h, you can start seeing, you can start seeing these two file systems that has been created on the system. This is the traditional way of creating. So what are the limitations? So we have some limitations with that. Let's, so let's understand what are those limitations. The very first limitation. Suppose the Oracle users who is using this file systems, they are putting their files into slash or a DB directory and this file system is almost, you know, almost used. It has been reached to the threshold value. Suppose 48 GB has been occupied. 48 GB has been occupied from this file system and the users they still want to put some more files into this file system but the space is already completed. 
So in that case, what they usually do it, they will come to the Unix team and they will ask to extend it. But we have created this file system using the traditional way. So we cannot further extend this file system. So this is the first limitation. We cannot resize, we cannot resize the file systems when it has been created. Okay. I cannot extend, although we have the space, if you'll see here, 30 GB space I, I do have here. 30 GB is still free here. 30 GB space is still free here. I can, but I cannot add 30 GB space to my this file system. So this is the limitation we have. So let's understand about LVM more here. So second limitation, second limitation is also less understood. Suppose you know I have to create a file system of 120 GB. So second requirement I have that I have to create a file system of 120 GB. And I have the disk, two disk I have available on the server. The first one is my 50 GB and second one is my 100 GB. Two disk is available to my servers, the external disk I have. Now requirement I have got that from application team that I need a file system of 120 GB. But here we have two disk, if you sum those two disk, it would be somewhere around 150 GB. But if you are going to create the file system using traditional way of creating the file system, you cannot add two disk and create a single file system. I am just repeating, you cannot add both the disk and create a single file system. That is a single file system, single file system. That is not possible. The maximum size you can give to any file system using the traditional view of creating the file system that would be the ma maximum size of a disk. So maximum size you can give to a file system it could be 100 or 50. So second limitation is this one. So let's move to the LVM. So with the help of LVM here we suppose we do have three disk here. So with these three disk, I can simply create a pool of disk, pool of space. Suppose this is 100 GB, this is 200 GB, this is 150 GB. So with the help of LVM, I can create a pool of space. This is my pool of space, I can say. So that would be somewhere around, if you sum up, so that would be 450 GB, 450 GB pool I have. Now I can, this is what we call volume group. This is what we call volume group. Now I can create the logical volume. So this is my first logical volume. I have created logical volume one and I can create the file system here and I can allocate that space to our DB. Okay, suppose it's 120 GB. And uh, suppose I have another created this file system and this is my logical volume 2 and that is for slash oracle. Suppose this is 150 GB. Okay. So total space I have used from this that is around 270 GB I have used. If you sum both 120 plus 150 that is 270 GB I have used from my pool. Still I have. 180 GB is still left. Suppose this file system is almost full. The user has already, you know, used all the space from this file system. And I need further extension. I need, you know, this 120 GB should be increased to 200 GB. Is that possible? So first, Unix admin who is managing this file system or Linux admin, they will see that the space from the pool. If we have the space in the pool, we can further add the space to this logical volume. So this is the benefit we can say. Second benefit is that I can create a single partition here that would be size of 450. It doesn't matter that I have to take the space from single disk. I can simply you know add all the disk here 450. I can simply create a single logical volume 
Suppose I have single created one logical volume. That is logical volume one I have created here, and that would be size of 450. And I can give it to any file system. Suppose this application user wants a space of 440 GB, and I have three disks. I can combine all the three disks, and I can create a single partition here. So these are the benefits of LVM that we are going to understand in the further lectures as well. So friend, that's all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to understand a lot of more things about LVM. So thanks for watching and if you have time, please join with the next lecture.